there man what the, you, you are you have to use those things properly do you know how many side effects there are to that with this what yeah like what well they cause flexing bruising exhaustion tiredness nausea headaches body aches heart aches fake aches energy loss energy gain thoughtful conversations pointed observations excited exclamations Neutral fingernails, you can't stop dribbling a basketball, flat feet, incredibly arched feet, scissor hands, makes you lose your keys. Water starts to taste like orange juice, which is really bad when brushing your teeth. Vitamin D deficiency, moist palms, all your electronics break, gawking onlookers, frenetic trembles, traumatic trembles, grammatic mumbles, tic-tac tumbles, your eyes become toes, your mom forgets your birthday, you get too muscly and you can't wash your back in the shower, paper cuts, sc soft stool, so every time you try and sit down on a stool, it just collapses under you. You bump your head indoors when you walk through, tremendous lats, and dry mouth. <laughs> Whoa, that's impressive. Are there any uh, side effects to talking so fast? Uh, hello everyone, my name's John. And I'm Brandon. And this is the So-and-So Show. We've got a great show for you today. John is getting the crowd psyched up and ready to watch. Yeah, today we've got uh, uh, Bible story time with Kellen. One! We'll have our question of the day. Two! And I think we've got a guest on the show. Three! That's right, folks! John just listed three things that are happening on the show today. He's three for three! Okay, you know what? Uh, uh, <laughs> What are you doing, John? Just insert your name. Uh-oh, looks like John's starting to lose focus. No, I'm not. I'm just trying to figure out and what's going on. And he's lost it. Oh, can't keep it together. You hate to see that. Will you stop it? What? What? I'm just... I'm training to become a play-by-play -play announcer. A what? Well, you know, the person who says everything that's happening during sporting events, it's always been my dream to meticulously describe something that people are already seeing with their own eyes. Yeah, that does sound pretty exciting. I know! And here's an expert to give me some pointers. <gasps> Please welcome someone who knows stuff! Hey, hello, come on in. Have a seat, have a seat. So tell everybody out there who you are and what you know. My name is Doris Nolan, and I'm a sportscaster. Oh. I do a little bit of everything, but what I do most is play-by-play -play commentary. Hmm. Brandon is stepping up to the plate, looking to deliver the compliment that will put him into Doris Nolan's good graces, the wind-up, the pitch, and... Doris, so glad that you're here. I'm a, I'm a huge fan. <laughs> Thank you, Brandon. I and it's that. a home run, everyone! He makes contact and sends it out of the park! Wow, it, it, it looks like you're looking to get into the world of play-by-play -play commentary yourself. Yeah, that's true. Do you have any advice? Um, like anything, you've got to make a plan and see it through. I started reporting for high school games and worked my way up. It wasn't quick, but I was passionate about it, so I just kept going. And practice, 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 just like you're doing. Practice out loud what you want to say and how you'll say it. Is there any chance that you could give me a demonstration? Uh, Sure. John, could you do me a favor and get me a cup of coffee? Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> now, there are a lot of different ways to call a game. 
The way we're talking right now is one way. It's just a normal conversation. Like, you can tell John has done this before. He knew right where the coffee station was. There was no pause, no hesitation. Look at that confidence. Isn't that right, Brandon? Yeah. No need to be nervous. We're just talking, right? Right. Sorry. Sorry. Confidence is key in this business. Understood. Another key is being aware of your surroundings. Like I might call a golf tournament a little different. Watch. John has selected the 16 ounce disposable insulated cup. It's a good choice for this moment. It will keep the coffee warm longer. Plus it's biodegradable. So it's good for the environment. Brandon. That's right, Doris. And he's crushed the cup. Was that too much? For golf, probably. Uh, <laughs> but hey, you messed up with confidence. You got to make mistakes, Brandon. That's how you learn. Let's try this time like we're calling a race. Oh. John's taking a pit stop to put a sleeve on the cup. No one wants a hot hand when you're trying to carry a cup of coffee. And the sleeve is on. It's time to pour. No time to waste. Regular or decaf? What's it going to be? Regular. That's the kind of fuel that'll push him past the competition. But will he use creamer? What do you think, Brandon? I don't know. No, no, don't feel bad. Look, you just said the three words that are the hardest for a sports commentator to say. I don't know. It's okay not to know everything. It's a lot better than pretending you know something you don't. <laughs> You're on the right track. Trust me. Really? Really. Now, give it another shot. We're calling soccer now. John's got control of the coffee, but he's still got a big decision to make. Cream or sugar? Cream or sugar? Cream or sugar? And he goes for the cream. A great call. He pours the cream in, a smooth pour and an impressive showing. But he's not done there, Doris. John makes the bold choice to go for the cream and the sugar, but it will it will, but will it be too sweet to drink? He stirs, he sips, and it's good. It's good. Go! That was awesome. <laughs> Thank you for your help. <laughs> and thanks for the coffee, John. Oh, you're welcome. It's Bible story time with Kelly! What's up, fellas? Oh, hey, Kellen. What are we talking about today? Well, today we're talking about a time Jesus asked his disciples this question. Who do you say I am? And we'll find out what they said today on... Thinking out loud. Here's how this game works. I will ask our contestants questions. They will be given a moment to think before they answer. And then they will answer the question out loud. Let's meet our contestants. My name is Erica and I'm a real estate agent in Omaha, Nebraska. I'm Louise and I wanted to give a quick shout out to my friends back home in Linwood, California. Go Falcons, woo! And I'm one of the 12 disciples of Jesus. I'm Peter. I don't think I have to tell you this, but just in case, the real Peter never appeared on a game show. Let's play Thinking Out Loud. First question is for Erica. Can God, the creator of the universe and everything in it, create something that is too heavy for himself to lift? Erica, start thinking. Wow, okay, that's a hard one. Now I know that God can do anything, right? So he can create anything. But then, God is also really strong. So there's nothing he can lift. But wait, can it be both things at once? I don't know. Am I going to sound dumb if I say I don't know? That's not an answer. I feel like I have to have an answer. But what if I... Time's up, Erica. Can God create something that is too heavy for himself to lift? Uh, um, well, here's, here's the thing. There are a lot of variables to consider, and what I am trying to say is I don't know the answer. Very good, Erica. You thought out loud. Sometimes questions don't have a clear-cut answer, and saying 
I don't know, is perfectly fine. 10 points. I wonder what the points are for. Absolutely nothing. Up next, Louise, your question. You're in school and a friend wants to copy your test. What do you say? Start thinking. Oh man, why couldn't I have gotten the last one? This one is so hard. I know it's wrong to let someone cheat. Of course it is, but can I really say that here? I mean, what if my friends are watching? I don't want them to think I'm a loser or whatever. No, wait. I know just what to say. So Louise, you're in school and a friend asked to copy off your test. What do you say? I don't know, Kellen. Ooh. So sorry, Louise. You didn't think out loud. You did know the answer, but you kept it to yourself because you were afraid of what people might think. When you know what's right, you should let it out. So that brings us to our story. Jesus came up to Peter and his other disciples and asked, who do people say I am? And they replied, some say John the Baptist or Elijah or Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And then Jesus said to them, but what about you? Who do you say I am? Peter, when Jesus said to you, who do you say I am? What was your reply? Who do I say Jesus is? Well, he's, he's a teacher. He's taught me so much, but he's more than that. He's, he's a miracle worker. I've seen him walk on water. I've, I've seen him feed thousands of people with a few loaves of bread and fish. He's, he's healed people who are sick and given sight to the blind. He's, he's the one the prophet spoke about hundreds of years ago, the savior that God promised. He's the Messiah. But do I have the courage to actually say that out loud? Peter, when Jesus said to you, who do you say I am? What was your reply? I said, you are the Messiah. You are the son of the living God. Yes, that's what Peter said when Jesus asked him, who do you say I am? He said what was on his heart. He talked about what he believed with other people. Thank you, Peter, for thinking, thinking out loud. <laughs> It's good to talk about what we believe. The more we practice talking about God, the more comfortable we are. You can talk about God with people who believe the same as you or people who believe differently than you. If you have questions, ask. And if you don't know an answer, that's okay too. Just keep talking. I'll see you guys next time. Hey, thanks, Kellen. Kellen, once again, showing everyone how it's done. <sighs> We're still doing this? Doris told me to keep practicing if I want to be good, so. Okay, okay. Reveal the question. Ah, who can you talk to about God? Maybe you can talk to your parents. Uh, or your friends. Or a teacher or a small group leader. Or you can talk to us. Go, go ahead. Yeah, we can't hear you. Still good practice yeah. just talking. <laughs> After an intense episode of The So-and-So Show, we're ready to sign off here. So until next time, my name is Brandon. And I'm John. And we'll see you. Let me do it. Oh. We'll see you next time. And Brandon has approached the coffee table. He's going for the regular caffeine, which is a risk for somebody who doesn't drink coffee. He's smelling it. It does not smell enticing at all. He's questioning why he's doing this. It looks like he's smelling he's tested the public cream cup oh he's putting the sugar straight into his mouth that's great it'll help the coffee go down sweeter that's and he takes a big gaping sip oh he spill oh he does not enjoy it wow i've never seen anybody gargle with hot coffee kids do not do that at home oh he doesn't have his wallet he does not have his wallet. Is he going to make a run for it, or is he going to be an upstanding citizen like a host of so-and-so show should be? Nope, he's running. 